a three hundred and seventy five thousand people oh. times. <laughs> I thought you meant like how many households will say like, by the time I'm 30, I should be married or I should have kids or I should already have my degree and I should be settled mm -hmm. or I should have a home. And it was that that uh, conversation about buying a home that kind of got people a little upset. Five, four, three, two, one. What up? What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the show. If you're new here. My name is Trey and I'm Q and this is how do you love me? Uh, we have a good one set up today, y'all. So go ahead, get your coffee, get your popcorn, whatever you got and sit back and let's get this thing rolling. Uh, Q, how full is your cup right now? I'm so glad you asked Trey. Tell me, let me know. Um, for those of you who are listening, <laughs> um, maybe you can hear um, that I'm experiencing some allergies or sinus issues. Y'all, if she, if y'all hear her sniffling, it's because she's sniffing crack cocaine. No, no, and no, I didn't just, even bring the thing in here, but I'm I found out that they have like this little vapor inhaler, and I just did that right before the podcast, and I told Trey, I was like, mm, I don't know how <laughs> these people be doing this, because my eyes was watering and everything. Hey, you know what's funny? I just realized it. Yeah, that's how you know we don't do drugs over here. I said sniffing crack cocaine. <laughs> Ain't crack the one that you smoke? I don't know. I think it's the one you smoke. My bad, y'all. My bad. Anyway. I don't know. Anyway. But anyways, <laughs> so if you hear anything in my voice, that's what it is. I did go get a COVID test, and it came back negative. Um, you know, we just got to be on the safe side here. But um, my cup, I would probably say it's about 80% full because I slept Friday and Saturday. And today I'm up doing my, you know, house duties and whatnot. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm on about 80. How about you, Trey? That's good stuff right there. Well, um, pretty good week. A little, little stressful. How? Uh, I got some work that's due. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You was off Thursday and Friday. Yeah, and I was doing work <laughs> both those days Now, as I can well. attest to Friday, but Thursday, I don't know what you was doing because I wasn't here. Mm, yeah, work. Okay, sorry. So, how full is your cup? Yeah, oh, I mean, my cup is full. I was just, you know intensifying what i was about to say i'm at about 92.6 um because it's a little stress you know down to the wire on some stuff gotta get it turned in what what's that do it uh, talking, like school si yeah school uh work science and then something for communications oh tell us some stuff that you've learned you're learning in science i ain't learning nothing yes okay. you are i uh, saw the notes on your desk uh some about covalent bonds. Oh yeah, okay. So yeah, rehashing up on covalent bonds, atom neutrons, and uh, protons. protons. Yeah, all that stuff. Y'all already know. It's just stuff that you forget about that you gotta learn for a test. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's where we are. Yeah, you'll be fine. You're um, you're gonna ace this test for sure. It's just always pressure when you're on a deadline. Yeah. And so I normally that's when I thrive. Um, like, uh, man. you know, come through clutch. Yeah. Oh, because um, actually, while I, while we were gone on our little break or whatever, I took an exam mm -hmm. that, you did. that you did. I was procrastinating on studying and doing and taking and whatever. And I passed it. That's facts. So for whatever reason, I always feel like I do a better job when I'm like when the pressure's on. So I'm pretty sure you'll do a great job too. Oh, good. You don't Cause you've been studying. Crumble. No, I don't crumble, but good. you know, then again, I do have God on my side. Hey man, preach tab. Yeah. So, um, let's go ahead and get into the intro and then we can start talking about what we're going to talk about today. Yep. If you've been watching for a while, listening for a while, that was it. <laughs> uh, updated, updated on the intro song. Yeah, and I asked so, Trey to shorten it because I was like, it's a little long, you know, just mm -hmm, cut it down a little mm -hmm. bit. So, um, so one of our big news that we saw was that Netflix is cracking down on password sharing. Yeah, y'all know that we share passwords. Of course. I ain't saying us. I'm just saying people in general. Somebody's share, paying. Yeah, somebody's. And somebody's jacking the code. That's right. So uh, Netflix has said 
<laughs> um, in order to continue, like, so if you don't live with the owner, they're basically sending a pop up message to see who's watching. And they're basically saying, if you don't live with the owner of this account, you need your own account mm. to keep watching. Mm. And in order to continue, you need to verify with an email or text code or create an account um, with a 30 day free trial. So basically, you know, if you don't get this met this uh, code within, you know, however long they give it to you. They're probably going to, like, log you out. Yeah. So they're just basically trying to crack down on it to make sure. Trying to get some more money. You know, yeah. if I can get another fourteen ninety nine out of how many people you think is siphoning uh, passwords? I'm pretty sure. Probably about 375,000 people oh. times <laughs> I thought you meant, like, how many households? No. I'm talking about how many households are jacking the password the and login yeah. from their friends or family. And that was being... Real modest there. I bet it's a, it's probably a million. Uh, and I then you tell. times that by another 15 bucks a month. And that's a lot of money that they're quote unquote losing. So, of course, somebody's trying to do something about it. But ultimately, it probably is not going to work. I mean, you know, it could, but it's probably going to bring some people to go ahead and purchase it. But a lot of people are going, as soon as that message pop up, Send that, send me that code. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> to the gonna main happen. Person, you and know? then um, the article that I found said some users reported that they simply pressed verify later, and then um, like the the warning didn't come back up again. Mm. So they like A little hacky hack. <laughs> who gonna yeah. stop me? Basically. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, Netflix. That's but cold. I mean, I ain't mad at them because you know when you got something that's working and well, it's yeah. profitable and you're doing a good job. You, you know, somebody's always going to try to hack the system and make sure, you know, we all get some. It ain't fun unless we all get some. But I can see good. that they, you know, Netflix won't stay money. OK, yeah. we providing all this great content. Give me the loot. Yes. Give, but that's give I mean, me. probably so that they can pay for some more, um, you know, shows and like those Netflix, Netflix, Netflix originals. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's coming out of their pocket for production and all that stuff. You think so? so? I really don't know how all yeah. that stuff works. Yeah, anytime you see Netflix original, that means that's coming out of their house, like their workhouse. I just thought they owned it. You know, they just wanted to put their name on it and say, we found these people and we told them that this show would be amazing. So it's a Netflix original. No, they found those people and they made that show, produced it, and it's a Netflix original. Um, And then, of course, they buy all the other stuff. I ain't mad at them. Yeah, costs Um, money. Well, in other news... Y'all, I'm, I don't know if y'all saw this. Um, a sports announcer used oh racial slurs and he blamed it on a spike in blood sugar. Are we going to show this video or no? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Let's this see is if ridiculous. I can find it. I mean, you, you got to pull it up. Right back here live after the it national It was just anthem. before tip-off in the high school girls basketball tournament near Tulsa, Oklahoma. But when members of the Norman High School team began to kneel, the announcers sounded off using racist and explicit language, not realizing they were speaking into hot mics. The announcers were not part of the school district, contracted by an outside group, which today announced an investigation. Norman School Superintendent Dr. Nick Milleno met with the players today. Right. Yeah. So. Wow. Basically. He was he was on one. Yeah. So y'all be able to see the clip as we play it. But basically, they said um, they're kneeling. Heck no. Mm-hmm. And they called them. They called them the N word. Um, e R. Yeah. Well, was it I'm ER? assuming because I can't hear because they bleeped it. Yeah. But they blamed the announcers blamed the use of those slurs or that slur on um, their blood sugar. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. Was that the best you could come up with? At the time, yes. Because they probably hit him <laughs> up quick. He, You know what? I, I didn't even think about that. He probably, they said that and then right after the game, somebody came up to him. Uh, what's going on with? Well, yeah, that's probably that. <laughs> that is what it said because it said he state I will state that I suffer from type one diabetes, and during the game, my sugar was spiking. 
And uh, he said, while not excusing my remarks, it is not unusual with my sugar spikes that I become disoriented and often say things that are not appropriate as well as hurtful. I do not believe that I would have made such a horrible statement absent my sugar spiking. Now, when your sugar spikes, what what do people normally do? Like, do they is that the one where they eat something or that's when it's low? That's when it's low. Oh, well, yeah, I mean. I think it depends on how high it is because I think if if your blood sugar is too high, you could um, the same probably Going the same thing that happened. Coma? Yeah, it's probably yeah. the same thing that could happen both ways: too high, too low. Well, but he, I've never heard on any of them diabetes commercials of anybody saying side effects may include racial slurs. Dude, that was yeah. trash. <laughs> okay, uh, just like anything else, whether it's you know whether it's cursing or saying like wild stuff like he did it can't come out of you if it's not already inside of you Mm -hmm. like period right right Right. like if you're practicing if you're practicing it or always listening to stuff like that has certain words or certain things then it, it probably will come up but if you're not how can it come up if it's not inside so i'm sorry but even on your worst day with high blood sugar, it, those words wouldn't come up if you mm-hmm. weren't already using right. them. Right, and then the thing that made it even worse is he didn't think the mics were on. Like, exactly. Like, you shouldn't be saying that anyway. Period. But, but I did look up the um, the symptoms of high blood sugar. It, it says increased thirst, frequent urination, fatigue, mm. nausea and vomiting, shortness of breath, stomach pain, fruity breath odor, and a very dry mouth. Now, in none of that does it say increased racial slurs. Well, not even close. <laughs> or it didn't even say anything about, like, disoriented speech. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? No. Some uh, crazy stuff like that. It didn't even say that. I, I don't know. All I know is, uh, yeah, his, his company probably should be down for that. Because yeah, I think they, they were. They cut ties with them. Yeah. Because okay. it was a third party. Yeah. Um, yeah. Company. Like, you're done, yeah. buddy. Well, um in other news You're done <laughs> in other news y'all um basically dictionary.com is about to add some new words and i know a lot of people have been talking about these two words they're like really these all right so the first word is finna and the next word is child i can't even say that word right without like slowing it down child child Boy, I like that. Please, like yeah. child, please. And the and the uh, yeah, basically. And the uh, title of this article said, "Dictionary dot com's finna look different." <clears throat> because they added those two words, it's funny. And I'm like, of all the words, why would you put finna? I would probably put fixing to, or you know, something like. That. <laughs> I don't. Well, do I say finna? I'm finna. Probably not, but I'm. About it's a to. lot of people that yeah, yeah. I would say I'm about to. I'm about to. I'm about to go to the store. But that's a that'll be one of those ones where they put the little hyphen and then B O U T right or something like that. I'm about to. I don't know. We'll see. But I don't it, know that. I mean, look, this is nothing new. We know where it came from, black people. Yeah. Well, see, let me tell you what the <laughs> definition says. It says it finna a phonetic spelling representing the African American vernacular English variant of fixing to. A phrase commonly used in Southern United States dialects to mark the immediate future while indicating preparation or planning already in progress. And to use it in a sentence, oh no, she finna break his heart. That's funny. That is funny. See, I don't use finna. I say bow to. Well, I mean, because <laughs> uh, that ain't when, in there yet. When I was so in college, I learned about uh, well, we didn't call it out, but A A V E. I learned about that, and apparently, we like black people and people who use like slang or whatever. We um, we use the verb be like different variants of the word be bout to what you finna do or. You know, Mm -hmm. what y'all going to be doing kind of stuff like that. So like different variants of B. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyways, that that was pretty interesting. But Finna didn't cross my mind to be added. I'd probably add fixing to or about to. What y'all about to be doing? Well, that ain't enough people to use that. That's true. But it's coming up. And when I say people, I mean others. Well, there's enough black people to use it, but it has to be big in the other community. So obviously enough other people. 
have been saying thinner. Yeah. And uh, somebody was like, look, I got to make sure my Scrabble points count for <laughs> That's this. true. That's true. I didn't. And it's spelled F-I-N-N-A. Yeah. I didn't think about that. I would, whatever. Yeah, that's um, how I would have spelled it. The other word is child. And it's a phonetic spelling of child representing dialectual speech of the Southern United States or African American vernacular English. And used in a sentence, ooh, child, you don't want to test me. That sounds child. See, first of all, didn't nobody black write this? No. They, but like, I need to go to the Urban Dictionary. They tried. That's, they tried. That's a okay. terrible way to. Ooh, child. Mm-mm. Child, please. Yeah. That's a, that, that's how people. That was terrible. That just put a bad taste in my mouth the way they use that. Anyways. It was that uh, so those were two <laughs> words that were added to the dictionary. Um, dictionary.com. Um, all right. So we have been gone for a little bit, but I wanted to share openly some thoughts that or some conversations that we have kind of had while we've been on break. Um, so first conversation I saw it was sparked by something I saw on social media. And basically people have been kind of giving a little bit of pushback to people who tell you like in your thirties, you need to be at a certain place. You know what I mean? Like people say like, by the time I'm 30, I should be married or I should have kids or I should already have my degree and I should be settled Mm -hmm. or I should have a home. And it was that, that uh, conversation about buying a home that kind of got people a little, upset or not upset but you know kind of having to defend themselves because people are saying like that's a capitalist way of viewing you know your life and i hate that people are trying to tell you that you need to go buy a home in order to you know be successful or whatever and so it got me thinking i feel like and this stuff comes up every year does it this is my first time hearing this oh, okay. this this one mm-hmm. like i hear it about the kids and the husband or, you know, getting married and stuff. But I've never heard about like buying a house. Mm-hmm. And it's probably because I'm following some different people than I've been following before. Um, and so this one girl that I follow, she was just saying that like, well, actually, let me just ask you this first. What's your opinion on renting versus buying? Probably should have said what she says. Oh, you first. want me to say? OK. Yeah. Well, she, OK. So she says that. um Basically, she's she's really she's against buying a house just because not because of the whole capitalism thing or whatever, just because she likes to be able to move around and, you know, uh, like, I guess just likes the the option to be flexible and make changes. And so if, you know, a house doesn't um, have the upgrades that she needs, she can just move on to another mm-hmm, place. Mm-hmm. If maybe she wants to live in another location, she can move to another place. What if her job transfers her somewhere? She can move to another place. Um, rent goes up, you know, just the, uh, the option to be able to get up and go appeals to her more than being stuck. She also mentioned that she has actually tried to purchase a home you know, so it's not like she can't do it. She did go through the process. And before she closed on a home, she just thought, this ain't what I want to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it got me thinking because it was like, what do I actually feel? Yeah. I mean, and that uh, you want me to bring to me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. OK. I mean, and that's really ultimately what, what it boils down to. Not enough people are thinking about what they actually want or what they actually um, would like to see in their own lives. They're going off of what society, um, social norms of the past, all these things that they um, are looking at. And then they're just following suit instead of, Hey, do I really want a house? Mm-hmm. And it sounds like that she actually sat down and took the time to see, is this something that I actually really want? Personally, um, you know, the, the spots that I'm a fly on the wall in now, I have people that say, you know, you you buy where you rent and you rent where you stay. Mm-hmm. And to me. Wait, OK, so break that down. Yeah. Even though you don't told me this. All right. Break that down. Yeah. Buy where you rent. Yeah. What does that mean? It, it like it really changed my mindset. I'm like, oh, now I see. Like if you are um, wanting to be like like she said. Like when you actually look at the numbers, more people are um, not staying in a home as long as they used to. Like mm-hmm. where they used to your granny and stuff, you stay in a house for 40, you know, 40 years or whatever. And then they died and then pass it on to whoever. 
That's not happening nowadays. Nowadays, people on average are staying in a, a house like seven years. Seven years, you know, put this money in here, and now you're ready to go because the amenities are whatever, or you want to stay in a new place, or you got a new job across the country, whatever. What they're, what that saying means is you buy where you rent. It's like buy a rent house and or a rent duplex, triplex, quadplex, whatever, and you have people that live there, you're bu- purchasing that, which is bringing in income. Okay. And then that income or not, your own income, whatever, will afford you to rent wherever you really want to stay. So if I want to move in two years, six months, five years, it doesn't matter because I'm not tied down to a single home. And I have other properties that are bringing in money that I am purchasing for long term, uh, you know, income. But I'm not tied down specifically if I want to move to this side of the town because it's popping. OK. And then in two years, the other side of town is popping. And now where I'm staying is the dumpster. But because I signed <laughs> a 30 year contract, uh, I can't go nowhere. Yeah. Okay. And they turn up my stuff. That makes sense. So. Um, and yeah. So when I saw that, I was just like, you know, that makes a lot of sense right there. Uh, and and plus the numbers ain't lying. Like and we know like you hear people as soon they in the house and they're when they're telling you, showing you around like, yeah, well, when we go to the next place, I'm going to probably want and in your head, you know, you're letting it slide. But in your head, you're like, wait, ain't this supposed to be forever? Right. Y- y'all just got here. But but you understand where times are and you realize that people aren't wanting to stay in the same spot for 40 years now. Um, well, so yeah. now that you have explained mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that that whole system, because that's what that um, I feel like that's what that explanation was. Would you prefer to? Are are you talking about you would you want to buy a place to rent it out and then you want to rent the place where we live, or are you so okay? Personally, yes, I would love to do it that way. Um, I just I think that there are there's ways that you can have things that you really want. Like, cause I think a lot of times people will just jump into something because they just want to be in that right. thing. So like, Hey, this house is for sale. I kind of like it, but because I really want to be in the house, mm-hmm. I'm going to do it. Right. And then you really not satisfied. Whereas if you take a route where, okay, you telling me I can use this first time home buyers, um, grant or whatever it is and purchase a, quadplex which is four homes and i can have people stay in all four and then or three whatever Mm -hmm. and then i can use the income that is coming in from those four and purchase what i really want you know in the area of town that i really want to be in um have all the amenities that i actually want for real for real and not just settling for something what is that going to cost you a year two years Mm -hmm. three years and then you can have exactly what you specifically want or, you know, you can settle. So, yeah, I, it makes a lot of sense to me um, for someone to be able to do that. Well, uh, me personally, I, I mean, I, I had never thought about the the whole renting versus buying. Well, I, ha- I have, but not in the way that I was thinking about it now that she had kind of brought up her point of view. But ever since we've gotten married, We've kind of moved every two years. Mm -hmm. And it was by my choice. It it had nothing to do with Trey. Trey's never like, all right, this place, I'm I'm tired of it. It's me. Um, Like the first place we lived in, man, that was the place. It was third floor apartment. It was out considered out of town to (laughs) most of our family. Um, But it was like the perfect, it was like so cheap in rent. It was a two bed, two bath, um, cover parking. The only thing was water bill fifteen dollars. Yeah, water bill is fifteen dollars. <laughs> the only thing was it was far from where you Trey working. worked, and I had just got a new job, and so it was it was too far for me to yeah, want a job because care. because I drove overnight. I, was I mean, I drove overnight. I worked overnight, and so me like getting off work in the morning is so much harder to drive home, mm-hmm. and so I would be like 
trying not to fall asleep mm. on the way home. And so I was like, I need to move closer. So we moved to another place, we got in that place. And I remember why, but we moved from there. Then we moved to another place because we were downsized. Because I was like, when we leave here, we're going to get to the house. Oh, is that what you were thinking? Yeah, you remember that? No, nah, but I probably could have told you. No. Nah. Like, <laughs> well, see, that was yet. it. We, <laughs> we, we lived in a nice place. Man, this had the best closet for us. The best closet for us. It was like perfect. Um, but we left there so we could downsize so we could start. Well, that was my thought process. So oh. we could start saving for a home. And when, when I say we downsized, I mean, we downsized and it was a, it was a, it tight was tough. It was, yeah, it was a tight fit. <laughs> um, and then from there we moved here mm-hmm. and we're in, um, like a duplex kind of situation. And so we got a front yard, backyard, cover parking or whatever. Um, but now that like we've been here like three years now. Or actually, this year will be four years. Mm. This year will be four years. And I'm starting to get that itch again. But I also hate moving. Yeah. And so I've been I've been looking on like Zillow.com and looking at different houses and stuff. And then so. So I'll, I said all that to say, I do appreciate being able to pick up and go. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if I if like tomorrow, if I decided I was sick of this place and I was ready to go, I could tell the landlord, hey, I'm next done. Month, next month we will not be it because of the contract that we signed and all of this thing. Like yeah. you could literally be gone next you could month. Be gone. And there's no like recourse. Yeah. Versus and that's why I mean, and you probably I don't know. I, I never because I knew what she really wanted, but I I don't know if you ever gotten the hint. I've been kind of against home buying for a while no i never knew that uh i done hinted towards it a lot y'all because like and this is no, nothing on anybody who has a house or bought, bought a house it's just personally uh when you just look at numbers and and look at it back you're just like this makes a lot more sense like when you when you buy a house right like now they say that this is an investment, right? That's what that's mm-hmm. what you hear. Like yes. this is an investment. Right. But when you look at the definition of an investment and like, okay, I'm supposed an investment puts money in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. An asset, money in my pocket, yeah. liability. Yeah. Taking money out. Okay. Every month is taking that one how that is taking money out of your pocket and Really, you don't own it until yeah, when? When do you own that home? Like until you eighty, and then at that point, you might not even be able to keep it because your maybe your income is gone. Yeah, or simplify it. Or yep. when you finish paying it off. Yeah. Outside of that, ask the bank who owns the house for yeah. real. Like if you miss too many payments, they're gonna come and pick it up. Yeah. So and really, you don't even own it. So they're selling this. Mm-hmm. Huh? Property taxes. Yeah, but well, that's not that much though. Like I'm property just like, taxes well, like hundred dollars. I gotta pay taxes on something I own because you don't own it. But even after I pay it off, you, now you paying taxes on the land. See, and that's ghetto, right who, there. Who owns the land? That's ghetto. Oh, it's, it's that's that's real. So, I but what like I'm saying that, is, like, whole process. they sell you this dream on owning a home, but you ain't owning it until yeah. you actually pay for it all out, and they sell it on it being an asset. Asset is taking money out of your pocket every month versus if I bought four homes at once. After month one, it becomes it's put money in right. my pocket. So that income. literally is a real asset. Right. But anyway. um, Well, OK, so back to my perspective on the renting versus buying. Mm-hmm. So I am more pro, I guess now that I've thought about it, I'm more pro renting just because like there's stuff at this place that. If it breaks down, we don't have to cover the cost this for is facts. it this is unless facts. we break it. Like uh, the week after we moved in here. Oh, yeah. I remember that. That was crazy. <laughs> it was it was crazy. <laughs> um, so we got the cable people to come out and they had to they were doing whatever. Um, and roof. apparently, yeah, they were on the roof and left one of the wires hanging down and it got caught up in the AC unit mm-hmm. and it jacked it up. Well, we didn't know. I mean, I came home one day, the air wasn't working, called the lady up, I mean, the landlord up and told her, and she called the people out. Well, anyway, she tried to say we were at fault. At first. She said we were at fault because 
that was a brand new unit. Yeah. And basically because we called him out here, it was going to be on us. And so I told her what happened. No, I called and told I called and filed a complaint with the cable people like, hey, yo, yeah. folks came. Out yeah. here. But anyways, I said all that to say they ended up covering it. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, since then, we've had her come out and fix some other stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's been t like no cost for us. Like when we leave here, if something's broken, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It might come out of our deposit, but that's but ultimately it's not up to us to fix it, right? And, and we ain't going around tearing stuff up. No, let me just say that. But I'm just saying, like when stuff breaks around here, like our mailbox fell or broke or whatever, she has somebody come out here and fix it. It didn't come out of our pocket. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like those are benefits, especially when you're broke. Facts. <laughs> okay, Facts. we don't have the money to be dishing out money. Five thousand dollars for a new AC unit. Yeah, boom. And then, I don't even know no how way. much a mailbox costs. I mean, you can get them for the for it's, you could. But if it. you ain't got no money, I almost. I mean, I almost was gonna buy one. I remember, but, but she then told she, us. Yeah, she said you in can't this have neighborhood, it. you gotta have yeah. a such and Which so and fun. so kind. You know, well, and then, don't even get me started on H O A's. Which I mean, when when people actually <laughs> look in the H O A's and see what they really are, you're like, I should have been a developer Damn. instead of that's just free money for them, y'all. 200 a month, 500 a month, how much your HOA fees are. That's just going straight to the people who develop that area. Mm. Well, anyway, so that's my perspective on renting versus buying or our perspective on renting versus buying. Um, all right. So the next thing that uh, has kind of been coming up since we just had spring break was like mm -hmm. how much I feel like I need a vacation. Like, I don't I don't care that I've had spring break. We had snowmageddon. We had Christmas break. We had Thanksgiving break. I'm ready for like a legit break. And I want to go on a vacation somewhere this year. <laughs> Why are you blinking like that? I'm just, I'm watching you. Oh, okay. Tell your story. I thought that was like sarcasm in your eyes. Like nah. whatever you about to say about to be sarcastic. Um, I mean, <laughs> no. But look, you're going to always feel like that. I feel. Yeah. Like, what that I need a vacation? Yeah. I do. I feel like I, I just want to go somewhere and experience something. And then when she comes back, I need a vacation. <laughs> and maybe I feel like I always need a vacation. It's no problem. I'm just saying. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just I feel like like right now, um, and it could just be this year, this year and last year. Um, like my first year teaching. I just feel like, like I'm always super stressed and overwhelmed just because it. I don't know what I'm doing until I get ready to do it, and I don't like that kind of stuff. And so I just feel like, you know, I need something to help relieve that stress, and I feel like a vacation would really help that out. Um, so, yeah, I'm just hoping. Well, I know that we have planned to go to a I'm couple like, where places. Are you going with this? Oh, I'm just talking about how I want a vacation. Oh, okay. <laughs> You don't want a vacation? I mean, I didn't say that. Oh, yeah. Anyways, I'm just trying to express that I want a vacation. To the people? Yeah, I just got to let y'all know. So I'm hoping to be on somebody's beach summer 2021. Yeah, we're supposed to be going. Uh, I'm like, I don't know if she's saying she wants a, like, again, I feel like she would want one right after, but. We're already put, going to some places, so I just didn't know. I'm just ma making and stating my claim for summer of 2021. I'm going to be off June, July, and a little bit of August. And so I'm just letting y'all know. Gotcha. She's just letting y'all know. Just letting y'all know. Apparently, I'm letting you know, too. I don't know why. That's what I mean, I was hoping <laughs> that you were talking to everybody else because I'm like, we're already going so where? I'm just saying. Well, no, because when I, when I wrote this in our document, I was really... Because, okay, so spring break was not too long ago. And while I was here, I was like, man, this I really wish I had somewhere to go. But I was really feeling like I was back in quarantine again for some reason. Like, I couldn't get out of the house. I mean, not that I couldn't, but I couldn't go, like, you know, there wasn't a beach mm -hmm. nearby that I could go to. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Yeah. So I feel like I was in quarantine again. Yeah, but then we did, we did, we got up and we got out and we went some places. And so that was fun. Big facts. Mm hmm. All right. So 
What? <laughs> I thought we go. go ahead and <laughs> pay some bills. We we'll go pay some bills. Uh, actually, keep going on your little vacation stand while I pull it up. Please. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, beef. <laughs> Y'all really want to hear about this? Before um, we went out for spring break, I started a little diet. I know. I mean, in our last episode, I was telling y'all about that. Man, I do such a good job whenever I'm working on my diet. Like, because when I'm at school, I have a set schedule. In the morning, I eat my breakfast. You know, during my planning, I eat my snack. During lunch, I eat my next snack. And then when I get home, I can eat, you know, whatever I have planned for dinner that night. But um, on spring break... Uh, no, nah, it was like cookie here, pancake here, you know, taco. <laughs> Speak, and speaking of speaking of pancakes and tacos, sometimes when you don't know how to make that stuff, you learn by reading the book. Mm-hmm. Audible. Audible can help you learn how to make food. Not only that, you can learn how to help you learn about different things that you don't know, books that you've never read. You can do that with Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers all the way to celebrity memoirs, news, business, and self development. Every month, as a member of Audible, you'll get one credit to pick any of those titles that you want. And they're also going to give you two Audible originals changing every month for free. All right. All you have to do is actually before we get to that audible helps people get more stories and information through the gift of found time. Meaning like if you don't have a lot of time, but you know, you haven't read a book in six years, audible allows you to be able to do that by putting it in your ear and somebody else reading it to you. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. All you have to do is go to, hdylmbook.com because they hooked me and Q up. Mm -hmm. They're going to give y'all a free book. And if you don't like them and how they do everything, you don't have to keep the service, but they're going to let you keep the book just for trying them out. Go to hdylm.com. All right, let's get back to the show. All right. So we have some questions from our inner circle. Um, the first one says, are you cool with your spouse going out of town without you? Trey, are you cool with your spouse going out of town without you? Yeah. I mean, that's no problem. Um, I think it should be no problem if, I mean, unless you have some reason for her not to or him not to. Um, it should probably be a reason that they're having to go maybe by themselves or whatever, but. Yeah, I don't think that's a problem. Why would it be? I don't know. But, well, I guess, I don't know. I guess we need some more context. But for me, I don't have a problem with you going out of town without me. But I have, like, real FOMO, like, fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. And so if you go out, like, the one time you went to Las Vegas, I was like, man, I wish I was in Vegas. Mm -hmm. I wonder what they doing. Dang, I, I wish I could go there. That that kind of thing. But I don't have an issue with you going because I feel like you're going to be doing something you're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. It's more of like. FOMO. Yeah. So I don't know. Which I could. I mean, I very. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody would have that. I mean, yeah. like, golly. Sure would be nice, you know, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. y'all. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it either. I mean, matter of fact, I mean. On spring break, I was going out of town without you. Yeah. Now, I didn't spend the night. It right. was just like a day trip, you know, go come back or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't yeah, have a no problem, problem as long as, you know, like whatever you've done in the past, as long as I don't have any problem with you in the past and you're not showing me any yeah. kind of infidelity and, you know, you just wilding out and yeah. spending money. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that's me, that's not you. <laughs> spending money <laughs> like, you know. We just got stimulated uh -huh. or something, <laughs> then <laughs> it wouldn't be a problem. Um, the next question says, hey, so I heard a question on this podcast and I'm curious of what y'all's responses would be. This lady was with a man since high school. They broke up and was apart for a few years. Anyways, they rekindled and he proposed to her. They now live together and he wants to just do a quick courthouse marriage first. 
She is in a stable job and he has small jobs while getting ready to start school. She found out that he is over 50, or excuse me, $500,000 in debt difference. to the government, bad business decisions, illegal stuff, I'm sure. <laughs> she wants to know what to do. She's scared that getting married to him might make her responsible for his debt, and she's currently debt free. He wants to get married right away, and she loves him and thinks he's the one for her. What should she do? Or better yet, what would you do? Mm, go ahead and start that. What? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I can. It, look, you ultimately, it comes down to what we just talked about with the travelers. Like, who is this guy? If you've been with him that long, right? You've been with him that long. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you know who he is and what, you know, like people... People don't change that much over yeah, the course of, you know what I mean? Like people don't really normally make dramatic, dramatic changes in their life like that. So you knew who he was before this debt. That's probably going to tell you everything. Like if he was doing it with this much and now it's 500,000. Eh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I like. <laughs> so would, what would you do? Would you tell her to go ahead and get married to him or? That is. A person by person so basis. What, but what would you say? That's what I'm saying. I'm telling you exactly what I'm saying. Like, if I'm talking to her, like, look, if you feel like you would be okay without any uh, remor like remorse and, like, a calloused heart because now he's brought in $500,000 worth of debt into both of y'all's lives and now both of y'all are responsible for trying to get that number down and, and all this stuff... If you're personally okay and you like him as a person and enough to do that, who am I to tell you not to do that? Now, if you just on the fence because you like the way he look or, you know, there's a nostalgia there because y'all were together for so long, you got to get out of there <laughs> like fast. Yeah, he, I mean, mm -hmm. but if you like, if she feels like, the 500000 is not that bad compared to the love that they're going to have and the years that they'll spend in marriage. I can't tell that person not to do that because who am I to do that? But if if she can't handle that, like if that 500000 is always in her mind or she always bring it up, like going to bring it up mm -hmm. to him and like everything that they do, mm -hmm. she going to bring it back to that, that ain't worth it. Right. Like don't even... Just y'all be friends or just chunk the deuces and split. And he got to handle that or give him an ultimatum. Like, hey, I really want to be with you, but this 500000 is hanging it up. Do something about that mm -hmm. if you really want to be with me. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start before that. So she said this lady was with the man since high school. They broke up and yeah. were apart for a few years. And they rekindled mm -hmm. and he proposed to her. My thing is, first of all, now, I ain't never had this happen, but I just don't feel like you should be going backwards. So if you break up with me and we break up, that's it. You don't get no second time. And now I'm wondering why you back. Well, you already know that. Uh, what, what you coming back for? Because now I feel like you, and especially after I find out about that 500000 Well, you, well, I just graduated and now here you, you trying to get some of my. <laughs> look, don't that's tell for me. real. But that that's what I would be thinking. Now, I know that may not even be true. He could. Just genuinely love this woman. And who knows? It could have been like if you're in the wrong business, that could yes. have been one business that right. racked up five hundred thousand like right. I don't know, maybe uh right. owning trucks. Like if you had four trucks or bought four trucks and then something happened, like coronavirus, boom. Right. And then I mean, depending on how old they are, I mean, we're still young. I mean, she's probably not. It's probably not super old. But that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. we still young. We don't know a lot of stuff. And so, you know, uh, $500,000 is a lot. It so is. That just means he plays a big game. Yep. Um, But, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's kind of the same thing that would happen if you were with someone and you thought about getting married to them, but they had, like, child support. Yeah. That's it's something to think about. Thing. So it's like, do does your love for that person, like, does it overshadow the the debt that is probably going to be taken over your finances mm -hmm. and so like that's what she's really got to think of just like you said so if you're going to be bringing this up every time we get into an argument that's why we broke because you know we got to pay your debt 
Mm-hmm. Like, nah, just just keep that over there. Don't even start it. Or can you can you do like a prenup or no, does that does that work for something like that? Yeah. Cause I I would do it. Not even to say like me with my little broke self, I could I could see me doing it too. Um, Cause five hundred thousand, like don't get it twisted. Money. That is a lot. Okay, like this ain't college debt. This yeah, is like I mean that is a lot. Like, that's so, like garnish your wages. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure you can do a prenup in the opposite way. Cause I mean, well, it's not even opposite. Like if she has money, then I yeah. guess she. That's could. that's what I want to know. Does she have money? Because the friend says he wants to get married right away. The only the only thing that uh, I would be kind of like stuck on maybe is he like even though you have a prenup like say she does have money and he's trying to get married real quick because he knows she got money and he got negative five hundred thousand <laughs> uh, that now becomes her debt if they're married mm-hmm. you know what i mean like right right so and i see- think oh well, i think at a minimum Maybe if you didn't even sign a prenup, he need to pay like uh, he need to make sure y'all have a life insurance policy that's way over that. Like, <laughs> so if something happened, you ain't stuck with that. Like, so that. he's gonna cover that. Yeah, it would, and then admit, you get the rest to be able to pay. Yeah, and okay. keep keep life going. But so that's got to be a minimum. If you haven't even thought about that, you got to make sure that happens for I don't sure. Know. Five. I mean, that's a lot. Like I remember. That's ridiculous. I remember back when me and Trey were dating and we were kind of entertained. I mean, this was like, it was like two years before we got married. Mm. Um, and we were entertaining, like being together forever, you mm-hmm. know, whatever. And Trey had said something to me. I can't remember what it was, but we were standing on my porch or my mama's porch. And um, you had said something. And I was like, "Uh, you got to pay that debt before we get together because I'm not taking on $12,000 worth I of student feel, loans. I feel like I remember that. Yeah. You was like, what? Yeah. That was, I was almost, at the moment. At that moment, I was very serious. And that was almost the end of us. Because I was sure. like, I don't have no debt. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I mean, look, it just would have been. You know what I'm saying? That would have been it, I guess. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, because the debt was already there. Because it's not like I'm a superficial or I'm here for the money. I yeah. mean, I still would have loved Trey, but the debt I just was felt, there, I, so. I was like, like me personally, I am so afraid mm-hmm. of debt. Mm-hmm. I'm so afraid. That's probably why it took me so long to go to a university and probably why <laughs> we ain't bought a house yet. <laughs> um. But it's just, I don't know, it's just a fear. I don't want to be in debt because I've seen what it can do to people. I don't like folks calling me and hounding me for my money. Just just Big keep facts. it over there because I don't I don't want that kind of stress. Big facts. Yeah, don't want that kind of stress. So I don't know. I mean, it's up to That's you. That's what I say. But I would definitely um, not rush into it. Get all the facts. I'm not going to rush into it. And then I would probably uh, evaluate why y'all broke up in the first place. You know, because you don't want that happening again. And then I I really don't understand. That's just me. Like, what happens if y'all do get divorced? Does that but still become your problem? It does? Well, see, I didn't know that. And that's something to think about. You know, in these days, um, some women say you don't need paper to validate your love. And and in this situation, (laughs) I would say... You better love him without the paper in the ring, cause I don't know. <laughs> I bet we ain't in that situation, nah. but I'm just saying I would That's definitely um, think about that one long and hard because yeah. five hundred ain't, ain't a little. That's a big commitment. Big commitment. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you good? Yeah, I'm good. All right, man, we killed this thing, y'all. We gonna go ahead and uh, listen. Thank y'all so much for listening to How Do You Love Me? If you're new here, we appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. While you're here, subscribe. Um, if you're watching the video, go ahead and like it as well. Pass it on to somebody else. Uh, also, don't forget, we actually would love to hear from you about any topics that you want us to discuss. Um, or if you just want to have some advice, hit us up. You can send an email to hdylove me at gmail.com or 
go to your social media IG, DM us at HDYLM underscore podcast. Or if that's literally too much work, you are, I just I just want to get this done. Leave a voicemail at 682-231-0848. And if you want to see what's going on as well, always just go to HDYLM.com. Remember, it's always grand gratitude over here. That's high thinking, strong faith, simple living, smart Smart work. work. All right. Peace. Bye.